Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're... Hey? Wait. What are you doing here? Don't you remember? The boss said you had to take like two months off, right? To use up your vacation or you're going to lose it. Who the f*** is this guy? You do know no one actually thinks you're Conor McGregor, right? Um, okay. How's a beardless freak like you gonna run the channel? Well, that, that's kind of hurtful. Big Boss Bulbasaur said you had to take two months off. Fine, I'll be back though. Give me two months, I'll be back here, I'll be running the show. Get out of my way. That got weird real quick. I don't know. He's kind of growing on me. Mm, you suck. Um, all right, guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at this week's releases. Um, I decided to just throw in that little skit there. Um, I don't know how, but somehow I became the guy known for having a beard. <laughs> right? I've only really had a beard for like the last year. Uh, whenever we moved to North Carolina, I'm just never leaving the house, so I never really shaved. Um, we went on vacation this week uh, to surprise my little sister for her uh, college graduation. She actually graduated with two degrees. Uh, so we, uh, we, I haven't seen them since we moved, so it's been over a year since I've seen my family. So we decided to surprise my little sister at the airport. She didn't know where we were going. Um, sadly, she spotted us before we could sneak up on her. I was even hiding in a bush, too, which I'll upload that video later. But I um, uh, already shaved, posted a few pictures, and everyone was like, I didn't realize that uh, that was you. Missed your beard. So we decided to throw that in to, you know, just kind of poke fun at it and let everyone know this is me. Now the channel has two characters. Three if you count uh, 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 Big Boss Bulba. Four if you count the professor who isn't quite out yet but will be. So <laughs> it's just growing with multiple personalities. So, But let's um, hop into uh, today's releases. Or this week's releases, not today. Um, well, you might actually be watching this on the day it releases. So it might be today's releases. But this is releasing the week of 615 um i call it the week of 615 because i typically get my product two days before release um this is why you're not going uh, i'm not going to be showing you guys product live in my hand however you should see in the little window before me opening some uh so you guys can see what's inside i'm just gonna have to attach it later um our distributor is very big on making sure people don't get it too early to sell or release um I think as you get larger, they start doing that. I know brick and mortar stores get it earlier um, because they actually got stock shelves, but online only stores like us, um, they don't do that for. So they don't want things that, you know, break street dates. So makes sense. Can't blame them. But um, today we're looking at two products. That is the Divergent Tins that you can see on your screen here. Um, I actually really like these, okay? Um, we'll get back to these here in a second. And then um, the Professor Juniper uh, milk carton boxes, okay? We'll be breaking down. Uh, what we're going to do is break down each product, let you know what's in them, and I'll also let you know if you should mark it as a high-priority item or a low-priority item, right? Is this the item that's going to be flying off the shelves so that you need to grab because there's not going to be anything else like it for a while? Um, or is it something, you know, um, that you really only need to buy one or two of and then just kind of, uh, you know, look for other products or uh, buy when, when the price drops uh, for a discount, okay? Um, so let's just go in and hop right in. The first one we are going to take a look at is the Divergent Tins. I actually really like these. It's not just the product, it's just the, the tins themselves. I'm actually someone who does keep a somewhat small sealed collection. Um, I'm not someone who hoards tons, you know, as a store, especially a newer store um, who's trying to expand as quickly as possible. We got to sell everything we can. Um, but I typically keep a, a one of each item sealed, right? Um, not for investment purposes, but more so just because I think they look good, <laughs> right? Um, for instance, the, the e, uh, EV premium boxes, um, those are th something that's just, they make an amazing display piece. There are other items that are fantastic. Uh, however, they're not really good to look at as a display piece. So I just open those up and really don't keep those, right? Even though the investment value may be really good, um, I'm getting it for it to look good, you know, uh, s sitting around somewhere. I know right now I have no space to really display um, yet. We actually just got setting up a new filming room. So hopefully you guys will start seeing a few display pieces coming soon. Um, but I don't have enough room to display stuff, so um, you're not really seeing a lot of it. But 
I pretty much just hold on to the sealed ones I think look good. And these three tins are absolutely beautiful. I'm sure you're looking at them on screen now. One, the art direction, right? Um, they actually kind of look like, uh, if any of you guys watch One Piece, they look like devil fruit designs on them, right? They got little squigglies on the colors and stuff. They just look real good. Um, for me though, one is the design, but it's also the color. Okay, these are very, very colorful tins. You have the Decidueye Deep Emerald, you have the Typhlosion, a deep ruby color, and you have the Samurai, a deep sapphire color, right? Um, I just really love the coloring on these. These are probably something I will keep uh, sealed. Um, now, for the contents within the tin, we have two Astral Radiance packs, we have a Brilliant Stars pack, and then we have two Evolving Skies pack. Um, Danny Phantom did a video a few days ago um, from filming this uh, where he opened it up calling it the the, uh, some of the best tins or best products we've gotten in a while. Um, definitely agree with him there. Um, I've se I have seen some tins that were, I would say, on, on par. For instance, these striker tins. I know you're saying, uh, dude, those sucked. <laughs> they did after the second wave of them. But some of you guys might not remember the first wave of these actually had a uh, celestial storm in them right so it was i believe it was a sword and shield base celestial storm darkness ablaze and then two battle styles okay that's really not that bad celestial storm at that time was going for like 12 bucks online 13 dollars online so i would say uh there it's definitely one of the better items uh that we've gotten in a while from pack selection it's Probably, I'd say the, the top three most popular um, non-specialty sets we've gotten in a while, right? With specialty sets, you can make an argument for Celebrations or Shining Fates, but non-specialty sets, it's definitely ha has the best packs in them. Uh, two Astral, one Brilliant, two Evolving Skies, okay? But then you also have the promo cards. Um, you have the Decidueye, the Typhlosion, and the Samurai. Of the three, the Samurai is probably going to be the most popular, for competitive play, right? Um, Samurott's already becoming a staple of the V-Star version anyways, but you have to have the V. And this is a much easier way to get it than buying online, um, buying the individual card online, or trying to open it from a pack. MSRP on these are $24.99. Um, if you break that down, right, there's five packs within the 10. So again, anytime on this channel, we like to go by MSRP pricing, not market pricing, because by the time I publish this video, that could be up, that could be down, MSRP will st stay the same. Well, not in today's times. I mean, MSRP could be up tomorrow for all I know. Um, however, usually it's the same, which is $25, okay? Um, so five packs, $4 a piece, that's $20, okay? So then essentially you're paying five more for the promo card. Um, now for the pack selection. Not too bad. Again, we, we're not going based off market pricing, but Evolving Skies is a little scarce to find right now. There is a reprint coming that everyone's been talking about, um, but that's a little ways off. So this is a good way to get Evolving Skies at MSRP because it's well above that right now. So you can balance that off. And most places on these tins are going to be already putting a discount on them. I've seen them go for 20 on most places um, on our, our website. I think by the time this video um, publishes, uh, it will be $20 on our website as well. So um, now let's go ahead and take a look at the Juniper box. This is a product I'm actually personally, personally excited to have. I keep saying box, but it's technically a milk carton. I know, I don't know why um, they put these in a milk carton. Um, the first one they did was Marnie. Um, whenever they said that, every time they said Marnie, I just kept, kept thinking of mil uh, milk no, tank. God, so I was like, oh, milk no. tank's going to be in it. But I had nothing to do with no. that. Um, more Pico is our main Pokemon. So, um, but for whatever reason, they threw in a milk carton, which looks awesome. Okay. This is another item I'm going to be putting as a display piece. Um, I love the coloring. We put a, um, advertisement out, um, a few weeks ago for pre-orders of these. And I just love the color combination, that light blue with the light green. Um, I used it for a few different advertisements that had nothing to do with Professor Juniper, just because I love the color pattern. Um, so this will be definitely be going on the wall. And when Marnie came out, I actually wasn't getting allocations yet. So that was an item I missed out on. I didn't get a single one of them. Um, never did, actually. Um, again, I'm not someone who goes out and buys for myself. So um, I have more money for the business. Um, so it's something I just missed out on. Maybe I'll grab one in the future. 
So I'm excited to get one of these. It has, so it's gonna come with a full art version of Professor Juniper that you can only get within the milk carton. Um, it's gonna have 65 Juniper card sleeves, not the berry, the Professor. Um, a Juniper deck box, again, don't put berries in the box, they're meant for cards. Um, and a large metallic coin featuring, featuring the Professor. Um, six tournament ready dice, and then seven booster packs. And this is probably what you're all wondering, what is in them? I'm sure you're watching down below and you already see what's going on. However, let's go ahead and break them down. We are looking at three Brilliant Stars packs, which is great because Brilliant Stars is getting uh, harder to hold on to. Um, and that's a very popular set, probably second most popular. Evolving Skies probably beating it. Some people probably consider it beating it. Um, two, two Fusion Strike, a Evolving Skies, and a Chilling Rain. Okay, I know some people are complaining about Chilling Rain. I would actually say I actually prefer the Chilling Rain over the Fusion Strike just because Chilling Rain is further away from the original release date and there's no more distributors. Where Fusion Strike right now, I believe they still have like Bill, uh, no, Battle Stadiums on their website, which I go order now. So there's still Fusion Strike product I can just grab off a distributor site. No Chilling Rain's product I can grab anywhere. So um, I feel the Chilling Rain's more valuable in a can I get my hands on it kind of way, right? Um, because even though it may not be highly valued price-wise, um, to find it at a main store, somewhere you trust, it's harder. It's getting harder and harder to grab, and as time goes on, it will become harder and harder to grab. So where Fusion Strike's gonna be, have a little bit longer of a window for you to get a hold of, even though I do like Fusion Strike better. So that's seven packs, not a not a horrible value there. Um, again, some people are, don't, aren't don't a big fan of the uh, Chilean Rains, the Fusion, but I think it's a good mixture. Um, Again, these boxes are meant for tournament play. They're uh, meant to get you ready to play competitively. Now, let's go back to both items. Let's uh, take a look at should you list them as a high priority or low, low priority. Um, the tens, I would say it's just average, right? Normal, it's not, it's not something you should be rushing out your door right now and check every local store to see if you can just find them. Um, but it's not, nothing I'd say just pass up on. Because of the Evolving Skies packs that are in them, I have a feeling they're going to go quickly uh, or people are going to um, grab them off the shelves a little quicker than they normally do for tins, okay? Um, if you want them for a display piece, I think they're perfect for that. I, I'm, I'm going to throw them up there on, on my wall. And then we have the Juniper box. Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I really don't know on this one. Why? These type of items they will do crazy good the first time they release. For instance, the Marnie box. If you guys weren't there for that, they flew off store shelves, right? I don't even remember stores selling them because they were all pre-ordered before anything um, even got to the stores. And then everyone was also pre-ordering for about twice the price. It was pretty crazy. I was seeing them usually go for like $90 before release day. Well, all the stores, including me, <laughs> um, are like, oh God, Marnie did fantastic. I'm gonna get as many Juniper boxes as I can. I did this. Um, however, immediately Juniper isn't as popular as Marnie. Um, so what happens is we have a box like this do crazy good. And the next time a very similar product will release, well, stores will wanna order more. However, Pokemon's aware of this and they go, hey, this is very popular. Let's print a ridiculous amount of it. And now there's a huge supply of them. And now, since there's more supply, there's less demand. Well, now it's not worth as much, okay? I think that's kind of what's going on with Juniper here. I, I feel it's going to be, be printed far more than all the others. I'm still seeing places for pre-orders everywhere. We still have them on our store, uh, at our store, uh, bulbacards.com, um, that you can get a hold of still. So I think it's less, I, I do think it's less popular than the Marnie, but I think it's also, there's much more supply of it. So I would say this just hits normal priority. It's not a high priority item, it's a low priority item. It's a good, it's a great item, great collector's piece, um, one of a kind trainer card you can get out of it. So I would say that pushes it up, that keeps it normal. Um, I would say that pushes it up to a, uh, high priority however the high supply kind of knocks it back down to just normal priority right um if it's something you want go get it um it's probably not going to last 
a long, long time, but there's plenty of them out there and you can find them from MSRP right now. So um, that pretty much wraps up this week's, uh, uh, this week's releases. The next items that we'll be releasing will be on July 1st, and that will be the Pokemon Go products. So stay tuned, and we'll do a, another video on that. Um, it's looking like a very popular set. People are, are going pretty crazy for it. When everything was first releasing, um, I saw very little hype for the Pokemon Go. Um, a lot of people are saying they're going to pass on it. Then as time's going on and they've shown off some of the cards, people are getting excited for it. Um, I've never been much of a Pokemon Go person. I've played it off and on, but it never really pulls me in. Um, I like the Mewtwo card they have in it. Um, Radiant cards. They aren't doing me doing it for me in a card art sense. However, that Charizard looks very interesting to play in competitive play. Um, so I'm really interested to try that. Um, however, that's for a different re review. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe and click the notify button so you get notified when our latest videos um, pop up. Uh, we try to post at least once a week. Uh, right now we're hitting two to three and we would like to keep that continuing. Um, my goal for the next um, three months is to publish two videos a week or more. Um, so you guys watching and subscribing helps me stay motivated to do that. So be sure to subscribe and let me know what you guys think down below.